Golf, Wikipedia Audio Golf is a club and ball sport in which players use various clubs to hit balls into a series of holes on a course in as few strokes as possible. Golf, unlike most ball games, cannot and does not utilize a standardized playing area, and coping with the varied terrains encountered on different courses is a key part of the game. The game at the highest level is played on a course with an arranged progression of 18 holes, though recreational courses can be smaller, usually 9 holes. Each hole on the course must contain a tee box to start from, and a pudding green containing the actual hole or cup. There are other standard forms of terrain in between, such as the fairway, rough, sand traps, and various hazards but each hole on a course is unique in its specific layout and arrangement. Golf is played for the lowest number of strokes by an individual, known as stroke play, or the lowest score on the most individual holes in a complete round by an individual or team, known as match play. Stroke play is the most commonly seen format at all levels, but most especially at the elite level. Origin The modern game of golf originated in 15th century Scotland. The 18-hole round was created at the old course at St Andrews in 1764. Golf's first major, and the world's oldest tournament in existence, is the Open Championship, also known as the British Open which was first played in 1860 in Ayrshire, Scotland. This is one of the four major championships in men's professional golf, the other three being played in the United States, the Masters, the U.S. Open, and the PGA Championship. While the modern game of golf originated in 15th century Scotland, the game's ancient origins are unclear and much debated. Some historians trace the sport back to the Roman game of Paganica, in which participants used a bent stick to hit a stuffed leather ball. One theory asserts that Paganica spread throughout Europe as the Romans conquered most of the continent, during the first century BC, and eventually evolved into the modern game. Others cite Chewiven as the progenitor a Chinese game played between the 8th and 14th centuries. A Ming Dynasty scroll dating back to 1368 entitled The Autumn Banquet shows a member of the Chinese imperial court swinging what appears to be a golf club at a small ball with the aim of sinking it into a hole. The game is thought to have been introduced into Europe during the Middle Ages. Another early game that resembled modern golf was known as Kambuka in England and Shambat in France. The Persian game Chagan is another possible ancient origin. In addition, Calvin was played annually in Lohanen, Netherlands, beginning in 1297, to commemorate the capture of the assassin of Floris V, a year earlier. The drive or full swing is used on the teeing ground and fairway, typically with a wood or long iron, to produce the maximum distance capable with the club. In the extreme, the wind-up can end with the shaft of the club parallel to the ground above the player's shoulders, the approach or three-fourths swing is used in medium and long distance situations where an exact distance and good accuracy is preferable to maximum possible distance such as to place the ball on the green or lay up in front of a hazard. The wind-up or backswing of such a shot typically ends up with the shaft of the club pointing straight upwards or slightly towards the player. The chip or half-swing is used for relatively short-distance shots near the green, with high lofted irons and wedges. The goal of the chip is to land the ball safely on the green, allowing it to roll out towards the hole. It can also be used from other places to accurately position the ball into a more advantageous lie. The backswing typically ends with the head of the club between hip and head height, 
the putt is used in short distance shots on or near the green, typically made with the eponymous putter, although similar strokes can be made with medium to high numbered irons to carry a short distance in the air and then roll. The backswing and follow through of the putt are both abbreviated compared to other strokes with the head of the club rarely rising above the knee. The goal of the putt is usually to put the ball in the hole, although a long-distance putt may be called a lag and is made with the primary intention of simply closing distance to the hole or otherwise placing the ball advantageously. The modern game originated in Scotland, where the first written record of golf is James II's banning of the game in 1457, as an unwelcome distraction to learning archery. James IV lifted the ban in 1502 when he became a golfer himself, with golf clubs first recorded in 1503 to 1504, for golf clubs and balls to the king that he play it with. To many golfers, the old course at St. Andrews, a Lynx course dating to before 1574, is considered to be a site of pilgrimage. In 1764, the standard 18-hole golf course was created at St. Andrews when members modified the course from 22 to 18 holes. Golf is documented as being played on Musselbeg Lynx, East Lothian. Scotland as early as March 2, 1672, which is certified as the oldest golf course in the world by Guinness World Records. The oldest surviving rules of golf were compiled in March 1744 for the Company of Gentlemen Golfers, later renamed the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers, which was played at Leith, Scotland. The world's oldest golf tournament in existence, and golf's first major, is the Open Championship, which was first played on October 17, 1860 at Prestwick Golf Club, in Ayrshire, Scotland, with Scottish golfers winning the earliest majors. Two Scotsmen from Dunfermline, John Reed and Robert Lockhart, first demonstrated golf in the U.S. by setting up a hole in an orchard in 1888 with Reed setting up America's first golf club the same year, St. Andrew's Golf Club in Yonkers, New York. A golf course consists of either 9 or 18 holes, each with a teeing ground that is set off by two markers showing the bounds of the legal tee area, fairway, rough and other hazards, and the putting green surrounded by the fringe with the pin and cup. The levels of grass are varied to increase difficulty, or to allow for putting in the case of the green. While many holes are designed with a direct line of sight from the teeing area to the green, some holes may bend either to the left or to the right. This is commonly called a dogleg, in reference to a dog's knee. The hole is called a dogleg left if the hole angles leftwards and dogleg right if it bends right. Sometimes, a hole's direction may bend twice, this is called a double dogleg. A regular golf course consists of 18 holes, but 9 hole courses are common and can be played twice through for a full round of 18 holes. Early Scottish golf courses were primarily laid out on lynx land, soil covered sand dunes directly inland from beaches. This gave rise to the term golf links, particularly applied to seaside courses and those built on naturally sandy soil inland. The first 18-hole golf course in the United States was on a sheep farm in Downers Grove, Illinois, in 1892. The course is still there today. Every round of golf is based on playing a number of holes in a given order. A round typically consists of 18 holes that are played in the order determined by the course layout. Each hole is played once in the round on a standard course of 18 holes. The game can be played by any number of people. 
though a typical group playing will have one to four people playing the round. The typical amount of time required for pace of play for a nine-hole round is two hours and four hours for an 18-hole round. Golf Course Playing a hole on a golf course is initiated by putting a ball into play by striking it with a club on the teeing ground. For this first shot on each hole, it is allowed but not required for the golfer to place the ball on a tee prior to striking it. A tee is a small peg that can be used to elevate the ball slightly above the ground up to a few centimeters high. Tees are commonly made of wood but may be constructed of any material, including plastic. Traditionally, golfers used mounds of sand to elevate the ball, and containers of sand were provided for the purpose. A few courses still require sand to be used instead of peg tees, to reduce litter and reduce damage to the teeing ground. Tees help reduce the interference of the ground or grass on the movement of the club making the ball easier to hit, and also places the ball in the very center of the striking face of the club for better distance. When the initial shot on a hole is intended to move the ball a long distance, the shot is commonly called a drive and is generally made with a long-shafted, large-headed wood club called a driver. Shorter holes may be initiated with other clubs, such as higher numbered woods or irons. Once the ball comes to rest, the golfer strikes it again as many times as necessary using shots that are variously known as a layup, an approach, a pitch, or a chip, until the ball reaches the green, where he or she then puts the ball into the hole. The goal of getting the ball into the hole in as few strokes as possible may be impeded by obstacles such as areas of longer grass called rough, which both slows any ball that contacts it and makes it harder to advance a ball that has stopped on it, dog legs, which are changes in the direction of the fairway that often require shorter shots to play around them, bunkers, and water hazards such as ponds or streams. In stroke play competitions played according to strict rules, each player plays his or her ball until it is holed no matter how many strokes that may take. In match play it is acceptable to simply pick up one's ball and surrender the hole after enough strokes have been made by a player that it is mathematically impossible for the player to win the hole. It is also acceptable in informal stroke play to surrender the hole after hitting three strokes more than the PAR rating of the hole, while technically a violation of Rule 3 to 2, this practice speeds play as a courtesy to others, and avoids runaway scores, excessive frustration, and injuries caused by overexertion. The total distance from the first tee box to the 18th green can be quite long. Total yardages through the green can be in excess of 7,000 yards, and when adding in the travel distance between the green of one hole and the tee of the next, even skilled players may easily travel 5 miles or more during a round. At some courses, electric golf carts are used to travel between shots, which can speed up play and allows participation by individuals unable to walk a whole round. On other courses players generally walk the course, either carrying their bag using a shoulder strap or using a golf trolley for their bag. These trolleys may or may not be battery assisted. At many amateur tournaments including U.S. high school and college play, players are required to walk and to carry their own bags, but at the professional and top amateur level, as well as at high-level private clubs, Players may be accompanied by caddies, who carry and manage the player's equipment and who are allowed by the rules to give advice on the play of the course. A caddy's advice can only be given to the player or players for whom the caddy is working, and not to other competing players. The rules of golf are internationally standardized and are jointly governed by the RNA, 
spun off in 2004 from the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, and the United States Golf Association. The underlying principle of the rules is fairness. As stated on the back cover of the official rule book, there are strict regulations regarding the amateur status of golfers. Essentially, anybody who has ever received payment or compensation for giving instruction, or played golf for money, is not considered an amateur and may not participate in competitions limited solely to amateurs. However, amateur golfers may receive expenses that comply with strict guidelines and they may accept non-cash prizes within the limits established by the rules of amateur status. Play of the Game Rules and Regulations In addition to the officially printed rules, golfers also abide by a set of guidelines called golf etiquette. Etiquette guidelines cover matters such as safety, fairness, pace of play, and a player's obligation to contribute to the care of the course. Though there are no penalties for breach of etiquette rules, players generally follow the rules of golf etiquette in an effort to improve everyone's playing experience. Penalties Equipment Stroke Mechanics Musculature Types of pudding Penalties are incurred in certain situations. They are counted towards a player's score as if there were extra swing at the ball. Strokes are added for rule infractions or for hitting one's ball into an unplayable situation. A lost ball or a ball hit out of bounds result in a penalty of one stroke and distance. A one-stroke penalty is assessed if a player's equipment causes the ball to move or the removal of a loose impediment causes the ball to move. A one-stroke penalty is assessed if a player's ball results into a red or yellow staked hazard. If a golfer makes a stroke at the wrong ball or hits a fellow golfer's ball with a putt, the player incurs a two-stroke penalty. Most rule infractions lead to stroke penalties but also can lead to disqualification. Disqualification could be from cheating, signing for a lower score, or from rule infractions that lead to improper play. Golf clubs are used to hit the golf ball. Each club is composed of a shaft with a lance on the top end and a club head on the bottom. Long clubs which have a lower amount of degree loft, are those meant to propel the ball a comparatively longer distance, and short clubs a higher degree of loft and a comparatively shorter distance. The actual physical length of each club is longer or shorter, depending on the distance the club is intended to propel the ball. Scoring and Handicapping Golf clubs have traditionally been arranged into three basic types. Woods are large-headed, long-shafted clubs meant to propel the ball a long distance from relatively open lies, such as the tee box and fairway. Of particular importance is the driver or one wood, which is the lowest lofted wood club, and in modern times has become highly specialized for making extremely long-distance tee shots up to 300 yards, or more, in a professional golfer's hands. Traditionally these clubs had heads made of a hardwood, hence the name, but virtually all modern woods are now made of metal such as titanium, or of composite materials. Irons are shorter shafted clubs with a metal head primarily consisting of a flat, angled striking face. Traditionally the club head was forged from iron, modern iron club heads are investment cast from a steel alloy. Irons of varying loft are used for a variety of shots from virtually anywhere on the course, but most often for shorter distance shots approaching the green, or to get the ball out of tricky lies such as sand traps. The third class is the putter, which evolved from the irons to create a low lofted, balanced club designed to roll the ball along the green and into the hole. 
Putters are virtually always used on the green or in the surrounding rough slash fringe. A fourth class, called hybrids, evolved as a cross between woods and irons, and are typically seen replacing the low lofted irons with a club that provides similar distance, but a higher launch angle and a more forgiving nature. A maximum of 14 clubs is allowed in a player's bag at one time during a stipulated round. The choice of clubs is at the golfer's discretion, although every club must be constructed in accordance with parameters outlined in the rules. Violation of these rules can result in disqualification. The exact shot hit at any given time on a golf course, and which club is used to accomplish the shot are always completely at the discretion of the golfer, in other words, there is no restriction whatsoever on which club a golfer may or may not use at any time for any shot. Golf balls are spherical, usually white, and minutely pockmarked by dimples that decrease aerodynamic drag by increasing air turbulence around the ball in motion which delays boundary layer separation and reduces the drag-inducing wake behind the ball, thereby allowing the ball to fly farther. The combination of a soft boundary layer and a hard core enables both distance and spin. A T is allowed only for the first stroke on each hole, unless the player must hit a provisional tee shot or replay his or her first shot from the tee. Many golfers wear golf shoes with metal or plastic spikes designed to increase traction, thus allowing for longer and more accurate shots. A golf bag is used to transport golf clubs and the player's other or personal equipment. Golf bags have several pockets designed for carrying equipment and supplies such as tees, balls, and gloves. Golf bags can be carried pulled on a trolley or harnessed to a motorized golf cart during play. Golf bags have both a hand strap and shoulder strap for carrying, and sometimes have retractable legs that allow the bag to stand upright when at rest. PAR The golf swing is outwardly similar to many other motions involving swinging a tool or playing implement, such as an axe or a baseball bat, however, Unlike many of these motions, the result of the swing is highly dependent on several sub-motions being properly aligned and timed, to ensure that the club travels up to the ball in line with the desired path, the club faces in line with the swing path, and the ball impacts the center or sweet spot of the club face. The ability to do this consistently across a complete set of clubs with a wide range of shaft lengths and club face areas, is a key skill for any golfer, and takes a significant effort to achieve. Golfers start with the non-dominant side of the body facing the target. At address, the player's body and the center line of the club face are positioned parallel to the desired line of travel with the feet either perpendicular to that line or slightly splayed outward. The feet are commonly shoulder-width apart for middle irons and putters, narrower for short irons and wider for long irons and woods. The ball is typically positioned more to the front of the player's stance for lower lofted clubs, with the usual ball position for a drive being just behind the arch of the leading foot. The ball is placed further back in the player's stance as the loft of the club to be used increases. Most iron shots and putts are made with the ball roughly centered in the stance, while a few mid and short iron shots are made with the ball slightly behind the center of the stance to ensure consistent contact between the ball and club face, so the ball is on its way before the club continues down into the turf. Scoring the golfer chooses a golf club, grip, and stroke appropriate to the distance. Having chosen a club and stroke to produce the desired distance, the player addresses the ball by taking their stance to the side of it and grounding the club behind the ball. The golfer then takes their backswing, 
rotating the club, their arms, and their upper body away from the ball, and then begins their swing, bringing the club head back down and around to hit the ball. A proper golf swing is a complex combination of motions, and slight variations in posture or positioning can make a great deal of difference in how well the ball is hit and how straight it travels. The general goal of a player making a full swing is to propel the club head as fast as possible while maintaining a single plane of motion of the club and club head, to send the club head into the ball along the desired path of travel and with the club head also pointing that direction. Basic Forms of Golf Match Play Stroke Play Accuracy and consistency are typically stressed over pure distance. A player with a straight drive that travels only 220 yards will nevertheless be able to accurately place the ball into a favorable lie on the fairway, and can make up for the lesser distance of any given club by simply using more club on their tee shot or on subsequent fairway and approach shots. However, a golfer with a drive that may go 280 yards but often doesn't fly straight will be less able to position their ball advantageously, the ball may hook, pull, draw, fade, push or slice off the intended line and land out of bounds or in the rough or hazards, and thus the player will require many more strokes to hole out. A golf stroke uses muscles on core, hamstring, shoulder, and wrist. Stronger muscles on wrist can prevent wrists from being twisted at swings, while stronger shoulders increase the turning force. Weak wrists can also deliver the impacts to elbows and even neck and lead to injury of them. Golf is a unilateral exercise that can break body balances requiring exercises to keep the balance in muscles. Putting is considered to be the most important component of the game of golf. As the game of golf has evolved, there have been many different putting techniques and grips that have been devised to give golfers the best chance to make putts. When the game originated, golfers would putt with their dominate hand on the bottom of the grip and their weak hand on top of the grip. This grip and putting style is known as conventional. There are many variations of conventional including overlap, where the golfer overlaps the off-hand index finger onto off the dominant pinky, interlock, where the off-hand index finger interlocks with the dominant pinky and ring finger, double or triple overlap and so on. Recently, Cross-handed putting has become a popular trend amongst professional golfers and amateurs. Cross-handed putting is the idea that the dominant hand is on top of the grip where the weak hand is on the bottom. This grip restricts the motion in your dominant hand and eliminates the possibility of wrist breakdowns through the putting stroke. Other notable putting styles include the claw a style that has the grip directly in between the thumb and index finger of the dominant hand while the palm faces the target. The weak hand placed normally on the putter. Anchored putting, a style that requires a longer putter shaft that can be anchored into the player's stomach or below the chin, the idea is to stabilize one end of the putter thus creating a more consistent pendulum stroke. This style will be banned in 2016 on the profession circuits. A hole is classified by its PAR, meaning the number of strokes a skilled golfer should require to complete play of the hole. The minimum PAR of any hole is 3 because PAR always includes a stroke for the tee shot and two putts. Pars of 4 and 5 strokes are ubiquitous on golf courses. More rarely, a few courses feature PAR 6 and even PAR 7 holes. Strokes other than the tee shot and putts are expected to be made from the fairway, for example, a skilled golfer expects to reach the green on a PAR 4 hole and two strokes one from the tee and another, second, stroke to the green and then roll the ball into the hole and two putts for PAR. 
putting the ball on the green with two strokes remaining for putts is called making green in regulation or GIR. Missing a GIR does not necessarily mean a golfer will not make PAR, but it does make doing so more difficult as it reduces the number of putts available, conversely, making a GIR does not guarantee a PAR, as the player might require three or more putts to hole out. Professional golfers typically make between 60% and 70% of greens in regulation. The primary factor for classifying the PAR of a relatively straight, hazard-free hole is the distance from the tee to the green. A typical PAR 3 hole is less than 250 yards in length, with a PAR 4 hole ranging between 251 and 475 yards, and a PAR 5 hole being longer than 475 yards. The rare PAR6S can stretch well over 650 yards. These distances are based on the typical scratch golfer's drive distance of between 240 and 280 yards, a green further than the average player's drive will require additional shots from the fairway. However, other considerations must be taken into account. The key question is how many strokes would a scratch golfer take to make the green by playing along the fairway? The grade of the land from the tee to the hole might increase or decrease the carry and rolling distance of shots as measured linearly along the ground. Sharp turns or hazards may require golfers to lay up on the fairway in order to change direction or hit over the hazard with their next shot. These design considerations will affect how even a scratch golfer would play the hole, irrespective of total distance from tee to green, and must be included in a determination of PAR. However, a PAR score never includes expected penalty strokes, as a scratch player is never expected to hit a ball into a water hazard or other unplayable situation. So. The placement of hazards only affect PAR when considering how a scratch golfer would avoid them. 18-hole courses typically total to an overall PAR score of 72 for a complete round, this is based on an average PAR of 4 for every hole, and so is often arrived at by designing a course with an equal number of PAR 5 and PAR 3 holes, the rest being PAR 4. Many combinations exist that total to PAR 72, and other course pars exist from 68 up to 76, and are not less worthy than courses of PAR 72. Additionally, in some countries including the United States, courses are classified according to their play difficulty, which may be used to calculate a golfer's playing handicap for a given course. The two primary difficulty ratings in the U.S. are the course rating, which is effectively the expected score for a zero-handicap scratch golfer playing the course, and the slope rating, which is a measure of how much worse a bogey golfer would be expected to play than a scratch golfer. These two numbers are available for any USGA-sanctioned course, and are used in a weighted system to calculate handicaps. The goal is to play as few strokes per round as possible. A golfer's score is usually expressed as the difference between the player's number of strokes and the PAR score. A hole in one occurs when a golfer sinks their ball into the cup with their first stroke from the tee. Common scores for a hole also have specific terms. In a typical professional tournament or among scratch amateur players, Birdie bogey play is common, a player will lose a stroke by bogeying a hole, then gain one by scoring a birdie. Eagles are uncommon but not rare, however, only 18 players have scored an albatross in a men's major championship. There are two basic forms of golf play, match play, and stroke play. Stroke play is more popular. 
Two players play each hole as a separate contest against each other in what is called match play. The party with the lower score wins that hole, or if the scores of both players or teams are equal the hole is halved. The game is won by the party that wins more holes than the other. In the case that one team or player has taken a lead that cannot be overcome in the number of holes remaining to be played, the match is deemed to be won by the party in the lead, and the remainder of the holes are not played. For example, if one party already has a lead of six holes, and only five holes remain to be played on the course, the match is over and the winning party is deemed to have won six and five. At any given point, if the lead is equal to the number of holes remaining, the party leading the match is said to be dormy, and the match is continued until the party increases the lead by one hole or ties any of the remaining holes, thereby winning the match, or until the match ends in a tie with the lead player's opponent winning all remaining holes. When the game is tied after the predetermined number of holes have been played, it may be continued until one side takes a one-hole lead. The score achieved for each and every hole of the round or tournament is added to produce the total score, and the player with the lowest score wins in stroke play. Stroke play is the game most commonly played by professional golfers. If there is a tie after the regulation number of holes in a professional tournament, a playoff takes place between all tied players. Playoffs either are sudden death or employ a predetermined number of holes, anywhere from 3 to a full 18. In sudden death, a player who scores lower on a hole than all of his opponents wins the match. If at least two players remain tied after such a playoff using a predetermined number of holes, then play continues in sudden death format where the first player to win a hole wins the tournament. The other forms of play in the game of golf are bogey competition, skins, nine points, stableford, team play, and unofficial team variations. A bogey competition is a scoring format sometimes seen in at informal tournaments. Its scoring is similar to match play, except each player compares their hole score to the hole's PAR rating instead of the score of another player. The player wins the hole if they score a birdie or better, they lose the hole if they score a bogey or worse, and they have the hole by scoring PAR. By recording only this simple win-loss half score on the sheet, a player can shrug off a very poorly played hole with a simple dash mark and move on. As used in competitions, the player or pair with the best win-loss differential wins the competition. What's known as the skins game is a variation on the match play where each hole has an amount of money attached to it. The lump sum may be prize money at the professional level, or an amount wagered for each hole among amateur players. The player with the lowest score on the hole wins the skin for that hole. If two or more players tie for the lowest score, the skin carries over to the next hole. The game continues until a player wins a hole outright, which may result in a player receiving money for a previous hole that they had not tied for. If players tie the 18th hole, either all players or only the tying players repeat the 18th hole until an outright winner is decided for that hole and all undecided skins. A nine-point game is another variant of match play typically played among threesomes, where each hole is worth a total of nine points. The player with the lowest score on a hole receives five points, the next lowest score three and the next lowest score one. Ties are generally resolved by summing the points contested and dividing them among the tying players. A two-way tie for first is worth four points to both players, a two-way tie for second is worth two points to both players, and a three-way tie is worth three points to each player. The player with the highest score after 18 holes wins the game.
This format can be used to wager on the game systematically, players each contribute the same amount of money to the pot, and a dollar value is assigned to each point scored based on the amount of money in the pot, with any overage going to the overall winner. The Stableford system is a simplification of stroke play that awards players points based on their score relative to the hole's PAR. The score for a hole is calculated by taking the PAR score, adding 2, then subtracting the player's hole score, making the result 0 if negative. Alternately stated, a double bogey or worse is 0 points, a bogey is worth 1 point. PAR is 2, a birdie 3, an eagle 4, and so on. The advantages of this system over stroke play are a more natural higher is better scoring, the ability to compare Stableford scores between plays on courses with different total PAR scores, discouraging the tendency to abandon the entire game after playing a particularly bad hole and the ability to simply pick up one's ball once it is impossible to score any points for the hole, which speeds play. The USGA and RNA sanction a modified Stableford system for scratch players, which makes PAR worth 0, a birdie worth 2, eagle 5, and double eagle 8, while a bogey is a penalty of minus 1 and a double bogey or worse minus 3. As with the original system, the highest score wins the game, and terrible scores on one or two holes won't wreck an entire game, but this system rewards bogey birdie play more than the original, encouraging golfers to try to make the riskier birdie putt or eagle chip shot instead of simply parring each hole. Shotgun starts are mainly used for amateur tournament play. In this variant, each of the groups playing starts their game on a different hole, allowing for all players to start and end their round at roughly the same time. All 18 holes are still played, but a player or foursome may, for instance, start on hole 5, play through to the 18th hole, then continue with hole 1 and end on hole 4. This speeds the completion of the entire event as players are not kept waiting for progressive tee times at the first hole. This form of play, as a minor variation to stroke or match play, is neither defined nor disallowed by strict rules and so is used according to local rules for an event. A handicap is a numerical measure of an amateur golfer's ability to play golf over the course of 18 holes. A player's handicap generally represents the number of strokes above PAR that the player will make over the course of an above-average round of golf. The better the player the lower their handicap is. Someone with a handicap of zero or less is often called a scratch golfer, and would typically score or beat the course par on a round of play. Calculating a handicap is often complicated the general reason being that golf courses are not uniformly challenging from course to course or between skill levels. A player scoring even PAR on course A might average 4 over PAR on course B, while a player averaging 20 over PAR on course A might average only 16 over on course B. So, to the scratch golfer, course B is more difficult, but to the bogey golfer, course A is more difficult. The reasons for this are inherent in the types of challenges presented by the same course to both golfers. Distance is often a problem for amateur bogey golfers with slower swing speeds, who get less distance with each club, and so typically require more shots to get to the green, raising their score compared to a scratch golfer with a stronger swing. However, courses are often designed with hazard placement to mitigate this advantage, forcing the scratch player to lay up to avoid bunkers or water, while the bogey golfer is more or less unaffected as the hazard lies out of their range. Finally, terrain features and fairway maintenance can affect golfers of all skill levels, 
narrowing the fairway by adding obstacles or widening the rough on each side will typically increase the percentage of shots made from disadvantageous lies, increasing the challenge for all players. By USGA rules, Handicap calculation first requires calculating a handicap differential for each round of play the player has completed by strict rules. That in itself is a function of the player's gross adjusted score and two course-specific difficulty ratings, the course rating, a calculated expected score for a hypothetical scratch golfer, and the slope rating a number based on how much worse a hypothetical 20 handicap bogey golfer would score compared to the scratch golfer. The average slope rating of all USGA rated courses as of 2012 is 113, which also factors into the differential computation. The most recent differentials are logged, up to 20 of them, and then the best of these are selected, averaged multiplied by 0.96, and truncated to the tenths place to produce the handicap index. Additional calculations can be used to place higher significance on a player's recent tournament scores. A player's handicap index is then multiplied by the slope rating of the course to be played, divided by the average slope rating of 113 then rounded to the nearest integer to produce the player's course handicap. Once calculated, the course handicap is applied in stroke play by simply reducing the player's gross score by the handicap, to produce a net score. So, a gross score of 96 with a handicap of 22 would produce a net score of 74. In match play, the lower handicap is subtracted from the higher handicap, and the resulting handicap strokes are awarded to the higher handicapper by distributing them among the holes according to each hole's difficulty. Holes are ranked on the scorecard from 1 to 18, and one stroke is applied to each hole from the most difficult to the least difficult. So, if one player has a 9 handicap and another has a 25 handicap, the 25 handicap player receives one handicap stroke on each of the most difficult 16 holes. If the 25 handicapper were playing against a scratch golfer, all 25 strokes would be distributed, first by applying one stroke to each hole, then applying the remaining strokes, one each, to the most difficult 7 holes, so the handicap player would subtract two strokes from each of the most difficult seven holes, and one each from the remaining eleven. Handicap systems have potential for abuse by players who may intentionally play badly to increase their handicap before playing to their potential at an important event with a valuable prize. For this reason, professional golf associations do not use them but they can be calculated and used along with other criteria to determine the relative strengths of various professional players. Touring professionals, being the best of the best, often have negative handicaps, they can be expected, on average, to score lower than the course rating on any course. In 2005 Golf Digest calculated that the countries with most golf courses per capita, in order, were, Scotland, New Zealand, Australia, Ireland, Canada, Wales, United States, Sweden, and England. The number of courses in other territories has increased, an example of this being the expansion of golf in China. The first golf course in China opened in 1984, but by the end of 2009 there were roughly 600 in the country. For much of the 21st century, development of new golf courses in China has been officially banned, but the number of courses had nonetheless tripled from 2004 to 2009, the ban has been evaded with the government's tacit approval simply by not mentioning golf in any development plans. In the United States, 
the number of people who play golf 25 times or more per year decreased from 6.9 million in 2000 to 4.6 million in 2005, according to the National Golf Foundation. The NGF reported that the number who played golf at all decreased from 30 to 26 million over the same period. In February 1971, astronaut Alan Shepard became the first person to golf anywhere other than Earth. He smuggled a golf club and two golf balls on board Apollo 14 with the intent to golf on the moon. He attempted two drives. He shanked the first attempt, but it is estimated his second went more than 200 yards. Number of golf courses by country in 2015 Below are the top 18 countries that have the most golf courses. The majority of professional golfers work as club or teaching professionals, and only compete in local competitions. A small elite of professional golfers are tournament pros who compete full-time on international tours. Many club and teaching professionals working in the golf industry start as caddies or with a general interest in the game, finding employment at golf courses and eventually moving on to certifications in their chosen profession. These programs include independent institutions and universities and those that eventually lead to a Class A golf professional certification. Touring professionals typically start as amateur players, who attain their pro status after success in major tournaments that win them either prize money and slash or notice from corporate sponsors. Jack Nicklaus, for example, gained widespread notice by finishing second in the 1960 U.S. Open to champion Arnold Palmer, with a 72-hole score of 282. He played one more amateur year in 1961, winning that year's U.S. Amateur Championship, before turning pro in 1962. Golf instruction involves the teaching and learning of the game of golf. Proficiency in teaching golf instruction requires not only technical and physical ability but also knowledge of the rules and etiquette of the game. In some countries, golf instruction is best performed by teachers certified by the Professional Golfers Association. Some top instructors who work with professional golfers have become quite well known in their own right. Professional golf instructors can use physical conditioning, mental visualization, classroom sessions, club fitting, driving range instruction, on-course play under real conditions, and review of videotaped swings in slow motion to teach golf to prepare the golfer for the course. There are at least 20 professional golf tours each run by a PGA or an independent tour organization, which is responsible for arranging events, finding sponsors, and regulating the tour. Typically a tour has members who are entitled to compete in most of its events, and also invites non-members to compete in some of them. Gaining membership of an elite tour is highly competitive, and most professional golfers never achieve it. Perhaps the most widely known tour is the PGA Tour, which tends to attract the strongest fields, outside the four majors and the four World Golf Championships events. This is due mostly to the fact that most PGA Tour events have a first prize of at least US$800,000. The European Tour, which attracts a substantial number of top golfers from outside North America, ranks second to the PGA Tour in worldwide prestige. Some top professionals from outside North America play enough tournaments to maintain membership on both the PGA Tour and European Tour. Since 2010, both tours' money titles have been claimed by the same individual three times, with Luke Donald doing so in 2011 and Rory McIlroy in 2012 and 2014. In 2013, 
Henrik Stenson won the FedEx Cup points race on the PGA Tour and the European Tour money title, but did not top the PGA Tour money list. The other leading men's tours include the Japan Golf Tour, the Asian Tour, the PGA Tour of Australasia, and the Sunshine Tour. The Japan, Australasian, Sunshine, PGA, and European Tours are the charter members of the trade body of the world's main tours, the International Federation of PGA Tours, founded in 1996. The Asian Tour became a full member in 1999. The Canadian Tour became an associate member of the Federation in 2000 and the Tour de las Americas became an associate member of the Federation in 2007. The Federation underwent a major expansion in 2009 that saw 11 new tours become full members the Canadian Tour, Tour de las Americas, China Golf Association, the Korea Professional Golfers Association, Professional Golf Tour of India, and the operators of all six major women's tours worldwide. The One Asia Tour, founded in 2009, is not a member of the Federation, but was founded as a joint venture of the Australasia, China, Japan, and Korean tours. In 2011, the Tour de las Americas was effectively taken over by the PGA Tour and in 2012 was folded into the new PGA Tour Latino America. Also in 2012, the Canadian Tour was renamed PGA Tour Canada after it agreed to be taken over by the PGA Tour. All men's tours that are Federation members, except the India Tour, offer points in the official World Golf Ranking to players who place sufficiently high in their events. The One Asia Tour also offers ranking points. Golf is unique in having lucrative competition for older players. There are several senior tours for men aged 50 and over, arguably the best known of which is the U.S.-based PGA Tour Champions. Other Forms of Play There are six principal tours for women, each based in a different country or continent. The most prestigious of these is the United States-based LPGA Tour. All of the principal tours offer points in the Women's World Golf Rankings for high finishers in their events. All of the leading professional tours for under 50 players have an official developmental tour, in which the leading players at the end of the season will earn a tour card on the main tour for the following season. Examples include the WEB.com Tour, which feeds to the PGA Tour, and the Challenge Tour, which is the developmental tour of the European Tour. The WEB.com and Challenge Tours also offer OWGR points. The major championships are the four most prestigious men's tournaments of the year. In chronological order they are, the Masters, the U.S. Open, the Open Championship and the PGA Championship. The fields for these events include the top several dozen golfers from all over the world. The Masters has been played at Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia, since its inception in 1934. It is the only major championship that is played at the same course each year. The U.S. Open and PGA Championship are played at courses around the United States, while the Open Championship is played at courses around the United Kingdom. Prior to the advent of the PGA Championship and the Masters, the four majors were the U.S. Open, the U.S. Amateur, the Open Championship, and the British Amateur. Bogey Competition Women's golf does not have a globally agreed set of majors. The list of majors recognized by the dominant women's tour, the LPGA Tour in the U.S., has changed several times over the years, with the most recent changes occurring in 2001 and 2013. 
Like the PGA Tour, the LPGA Tour long had four majors, but now has five, the Anna Inspiration, the Women's PGA Championship, the US Women's Open, the Women's British Open and the Evian Championship. Only the last two are also recognized as majors by the Ladies European Tour. However, the significance of this is limited, as the LPGA is far more dominant in women's golf than the PGA Tour is in mainstream men's golf. For example, the BBC has been known to use the US definition of women's majors without qualifying it. Also, the Ladies Golf Union, the governing body for women's golf in Great Britain and Ireland, stated on its official website that the Women's British Open was the only women's major to be played outside the U.S. For many years, the Ladies European Tour tacitly acknowledged the dominance of the LPGA Tour by not scheduling any of its own events to conflict with the three LPGA majors played in the U.S., but that changed beginning in 2008, when the LET scheduled an event opposite the LPGA Championship. The second richest women's tour, the LPGA of Japan Tour, does not recognize any of the US LPGA or European majors as it has its own set of majors. However, these events attract little notice outside Japan. Senior men's golf does not have a globally agreed set of majors. The list of senior majors on the U.S. based PGA Tour champions has changed over the years, but always by expansion. PGA Tour champions now recognizes five majors, the Senior PGA Championship, the Tradition, the Senior Players Championship, the United States Senior Open, and the Senior Open Championship. Skins Of the five events, the Senior PGA is by far the oldest, having been founded in 1937. The other events all date from the 1980s, when senior golf became a commercial success as the first golf stars of the television era, such as Arnold Palmer and Gary Player, reached the relevant age. The Senior Open Championship was not recognized as a major by PGA Tour champions until 2003. The European Senior Tour recognizes only the Senior PGA and the two Senior Opens as majors. However, PGA Tour champions is arguably more dominant in global senior golf than the US LPGA is in global women's golf. After a 1-12-year absence from the Olympics Games, golf returned for the 2016 Rio Games. 41 different countries were represented by 120 athletes. 9 points Stableford It wasn't until 1552 that the first woman golfer played the game. Mary Queen of Scots commissioned St. Andrews Lynx. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that women were taken seriously and eventually broke the gentlemen-only, ladies' forbidden rule. Many men saw women as unfit to play the sport due to their lack of strength and ability. In the United States, 1891 was a pivotal year for ladies golf because the Shinnecock Hills nine-hole course was built in Southampton, New York, for women and was the first club to offer membership to women golfers. Four years later, in 1895, the U.S. Golf Association helped the first women's amateur championship tournament. Just like professional golfer Bobby Jones, Joyce Weathered was considered to be a star in the 1920s. Jones praised Weathered in 1930 after they had played an exhibition against each other. He doubted that there had ever been a better golfer, man, or woman. However, Bobby Jones' comment wasn't enough for others to change their views on women golfers. 
Team Play Unofficial Team Variations Handicap Systems Popularity Golf Courses Worldwide Professional Golf Instruction Golf Tours Men's Major Championships Women's Major Championships Senior Major Championships Olympic Games Controversy Women International Events The Royal Liverpool S Club refused entry of Sir Henry Cotton S wife into the clubhouse in the late 1940s. The secretary of the club released a statement saying, No woman ever has entered the clubhouse and, praise God, no woman ever will. However, American golfer and all-around athlete, Babe Zaharias didn't have to enter the clubhouse. She was able to prove herself on the course, going on to become the first American to win the British women's amateur title in 1947. The following year she became the first woman to attempt to qualify for the U.S. Open, but her application was rejected by the USGA. They stated that the event was intended to be open to men only. The Ladies Professional Golf Association was formed in 1950 as a way to popularize the sport and provide competitive opportunities for golfers. The competitions were not the same for the men and women. It wasn't until 1972 that U.S. Congress passed the Title IX of the Education Amendments. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subject to discrimination under any education program or activities receiving federal financial assistance. Today, Women golfers are still fighting and working hard to have the same opportunities as men golfers. There is still a big pay gap in the USGA. The USGA has a long history of writing bigger checks to winners of the men's US Open than the US Women's Open. The next step to equality is a female Masters tournament since there is currently only a tournament for men.